Now up to this point we've done a lot of sculpting modeling, you might say organic modeling. But let's go ahead and use a brush called the Z Modeler brush, which will get you acclimated to more of a box modeling workflow within ZBrush, which will really come in handy. You can solve a lot of problems with Dynamesh and masking and sculpting and clipping and stuff like that. But there's a lot of really good functionality in the hard surface side as well. So when I'm using Z Modeler, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start with the Polymesh 3D and just drag it out on my canvas and go into edit mode. What this allows me to do is to skip the Make Polymesh 3D part because what I'm going to do is go down here to initialize. Now we've touched in briefly on these initialize options. Uh, basically if you click and drag on these sliders you can dial in any number. You can also go through here and choose a number like 3 and then just tap tab and type 3 or just click on here and hit 3. Hit enter and that'll go ahead and lock that value in there and then you can choose a Q cube and if we turn on polyframe you're gonna see here it is divided by 3. You can do a Q sphere Q grid which is just a plane and then an X, Y, and Z cylinder depending on the axis that you want. So what we can do is we can start uh, with a very uh, simple cube that looks like so we'll go ahead and keep three here, hit Q cube. And you're going to see we have polygroups on both sides here. And if we hit X to go across X symmetry and turn on our floor, we have Z forward here and here is the uh, left and right side of the object. So what I can do is I can hover over uh, one of these components. And right now, if I hover over this component, you're going to see it's going to kind of snap that dot to verts. And if I hit B, Z to narrow it down to all the brushes with, that start with Z, and then M is Z Modeler. So now I can hover over a point, and you're also going to see I can highlight edges and faces. And if I hover over any of those components, let's choose a face, hold down spacebar, you're going to see I am automatically in Z Modeler polygon actions. If I hover over an edge and hold down spacebar, I'm in edge actions. And of course, if I hover over a point, I'm in point actions. Now underneath here, you're going to see there's target and modifier. So if we go back here to face, we have target, some more options down here, and then modifiers down here at the very bottom. Now this may seem like an overwhelming menu, like there's a lot of things to choose from. But once you get the basics down, you're going to see you only, you're only going to use a handful of these things ever, probably. And even then, there's some repeats in here. So try not to get too overwhelmed. It'll become easier where you start learning where things are. Of course, if you're used to signing hotkeys to brushes, the cool thing about Z Modeler is you can hover over face and choose a face action. So for example, Q mesh a single poly, an edge action, in this case insert single edge loop, and a point action, in this case move by brush radius. And you can save that as one hotkey for three different component actions. So if I want, I can go over here to Z Modeler. I can say clone. And now I've got a new Z Modeler brush at the very bottom here. And now I can say, if I wanted to make, say, a topology brush, I can hover over an edge. I can say extrude, snap to surface. I can hover over a point and say move, snap to surface. And I can hover over a face and say do nothing. So now I can go in here to brush, save as. I can save it in my C program files, Pixelogic version number, Z startup brush presets, so that it shows up every single time I start up ZBrush. And then I can assign a hotkey to this. And I, you know, I can save brush save as and give it a name besides ZModeler 2 or keep ZModeler 2 if that's okay. And then every time I start up ZBrush I can assign a hotkey to that brush and I'll know that whenever I choose that hotkey it'll choose that ZModeler brush with those face, edge, and point attributes that I want. So instead of assigning a hotkey to say bevel edge loop complete, I can assign a hotkey to bevel edge, inset, polygroup all, and point split. So if I use those all the time together, I can assign a hotkey to all three actions. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's back up. Let's go ahead and undo all those changes. And I'm going to go up here to brush, reset all brushes. So now when I hit BZM, that's going to grab our Z Modeler brush. When I hover over a face, the default's going to be Q Mesh a single poly. So let's focus on face actions for a little bit here. Now right now I have X Symmetry turned on. So if I tap out of X Symmetry and I say Q Mesh a single poly, it'll just Q Mesh a poly on this side. Now what is Q Mesh? Q Mesh is basically uh, an extrude with a few more cool properties uh, that extrude doesn't have. There is an extrude in here. If you hover over a face, you can just do extrude. However, 
if I choose QMesh a single poly and I start pulling this out, you're going to see it's going to snap to that other object or that other face next to it. And in fact, it's going to snap to increments. So you're going to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 increments before it caps out. And I can continue to do this. And as I do that, if I hold down Shift to Smooth, all of these are vert welded. However, if I hover over a face and I switch to Extrude a single poly and I extrude this out, it's not going to snap. And in fact, even though it looks like those are welded, I can hold down Shift to Smooth and you're going to see, let's drop my Z intensity down, you're going to see those are going to split apart because those faces are actually separate. So that's one cool thing that QMesh can do. We hover over a face, hold down Spacebar, say QMesh a single poly, then you're going to see there's an align tenth step. If we change it to quarter step, it's going to go snap, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, before it caps out. So that's why it was going from 10 to 4. You can also do full step. It'll just snap straight out to that without having an incremental uh, angle. So let's take our undo slider and we'll undo all the way back to where we just have our cube here. Now, if I hover over a face, and we've already talked about QMesh, a single poly, that's our target. You can choose all polygons and it'll do every single polygon you see. Uh, and there's a bunch of options in here. Generally speaking, I tend to use polygroups. And you see, we already have polygroups on here. In fact, if you hit Control W, that'll make it all one polygroup. And then if I go up here and do a polygroup, group by normals, if you remember that normal angle here, will say every single major angle change will get a new polygroup on that surface. So you can see we have a different polygroup on every single side. So if I hover over a face and choose QMesh Polygroup All, every single face with that polygroup will be QMeshed. So I can QMesh this one and QMesh this one. In fact, if I QMesh something out and then I just tap, it's going to do the exact same height that I pulled out originally. You're also going to see every single, every single time I do this, it gives me the same polygroup here. So now I hover over this face and say QMesh Polygroup All, every single polygroup, because these are all the same, they're all the same color, it's going to do all of those. If I switch this to polygroup island, just this island of polygons, let's go ahead and switch over here to skin shader force, you can see it a little bit better, just these pink ones right here will move because it's separated by an entire polygroup ring that doesn't match. So you can see these pink polygroups here don't touch any other ones. That's considered an island and I can just pull these ones out. Alternatively, you can also hover over face and say flat island. So now anything that's sharing that same level where it's flat right here, you can pull just those out or just these out because again that's a flat island here. So you can pull these out and again it's QMesh so it'll snap and we also have a line full step on. So now if you do that and you're going to say okay QMesh, Polygroup All, and you're QMeshing all these out, and you're like, I wish I could pull one out and not have it do the same polygroup. So if I undo back where we started here, as I'm pulling out, I can say QMesh, Polygroup All, and then I can say QMesh, Polygroup All, and I tap Alt. And as I tap Alt, it's going to cycle through new polygroups here. So I can go through here and tap Alt and get different polygroups. So now when I go through here and say QMesh Polygroup All, it's just going to grab these ones because those are the only orange polygroups I have on my entire object. If I do this one where the yellow is, it's going to go all the way across and then it's going to start wanting to snap here. So if I don't want that snapping behavior, I can simply go over here to Extrude Polygroup All and now it won't try and snap. Of course, I'm going to get some planar faces over here, probably not the best idea, but that's available to you. Now, if I want to reset up my polygroups, all I got to do is go over here to Group by Normals. And now every single one of those major face changes gets its own polygroup. So now I can go through here, QMesh, Polygroup All, pull these ones out, and again, it'll snap, snap, snap. Or, like we were talking about before, QMesh, Flat Island, and now it's going to include this polygroup and this face here and all of these ones because they all share that same flat level. So I can pull all these up at once. Now you're going to see QMesh snapped all of these ones but left kind of just an extra little uh, vert that kind of doesn't know where to stop. You can fix that by holding down Control Alt, hitting W to go to Gizmo, hold down Alt and snap to this one vert, hold down Shift to constrain it just up and down, and then use Z Scale to go ahead and scale this out. 
Alternatively, you can also hold down Control Alt and unmask this, hit Control Shift, change it to Clip Curve, and now I remember this gradient will pull verts toward the flat line. So we can just go here and just change all of those. So in fact, if we go over here to our deformation and then run some noise through the top here, we can hold down Control Shift and clip these all to a flat line. And then over here, we'll hold down Control Alt. We can clip these. And then over here, we can hold down Control Alt. And we'll do W, Control Alt, Shift to set that pivot. And then we'll use Z scale to just scale those along a flat island there. So let's go ahead and undo back. Now you're going to see if we turn X symmetry back on by tapping X on our keyboard here, we have a pink polygroup over here and a blue polygroup over here. And if we hover over a face and say Q mesh polygroup all, and we pull out, it's going to do both sides. However, if we turn off X symmetry and say Q mesh polygroup all, it's only going to do that one side because this is the only polygroup here. So X symmetry will override polygroup all. But usually what I like to do, if I want to make sure I'm working symmetrically, I'm going to go over here to geometry, modify topology, do a quick mirror and weld across the X axis. That's going to put in a new midline here just to ensure that this thing is mirrored and welded across a single axis. And now you're going to see both polygroups are the same on both sides. If I undo that, you're going to see this one's blue, this one's pink. If I do a mirror and weld, now it's blue and pink. And in fact, if we turn on our floor here, you're going to see Z forward is actually the side we want to be on because it's going to copy the negative X axis over to the positive X axis. So now let's keep talking about face action. So again, we're going to hover over a face with our Z modeler brush, B, Z, M. Hold down space bar. There's bevel. So you can go through here and you can bevel a single poly. And usually a single poly is the first target. We're going to do polygroup all. Bevel this entire polygroup here. But usually when I'm beveling, what I'll do is I'll hover over an edge and I'll choose bevel. I'll do an edge bevel here. But we'll get to that uh, edge actions in a bit. So hover over a face. And here we have bridge. So we can actually bridge two polygons here. One thing you can do with Q mesh, if we hover over a face and go back to Q mesh here, Q mesh polygroup all, you can start pulling this polygroup out. And if you hold down shift, you can actually pull that whole polygroup all. Again, the target is all of these along that surface normal. So very quickly, I can go through here. And again, hold down shift to move this entire thing. And also I can go through here. If I switch this back to Q mesh to single poly, I can push these down and it'll actually get rid of those, but it'll still be all vert welded. So this is a very cool way to go through here and clean up geometry, add geometry, and poke holes through geometry without having to go through here and do a lot of bridge actions. But we can also bridge faces. So if I hover over a face and say bridge connected polys, if I zoom in, you're going to see there's a little orange connected line here. So I can bridge these two polygons and I can pull out. And you're going to see that's going to have some interactive uh, behavior there. Now, if I want to get this to work a little bit better with connected polys, I go down here to bridge connected polys. I'm going to choose circle. So now when I pull this out, hopefully it'll be a little more circular, but it's still kind of skewing it a bit. So I'm going to tell it down here, align to normal. And you're going to see we have interactive curvature and resolution. That's what's causing this curvature to happen. I can pull up and down on my screen and that's the resolution. And then left and right is the curvature here. So I can quickly go through here and pull left and right to set the height and then drag to set the resolution. So that's where that interactive curvature and interactive resolution comes into play. If I don't, I can say, okay, specified resolution, I want to have eight. Specified curvature, I want at 100. So now when I click through here, it's automatically going to snap to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the curvature is going to be perfectly circular. So it's kind of up to you if you want to, you know, make it perfect or if you want to have that interactive ability here. And again, the thing that made it work a little bit nicer is just from aligning to tangent to aligning to normal. If we have a line to tangent, it tends to kind of skew it over to the side. 
So switching this over here to align to normal helped with that issue. Now you're going to see we also have bridge two polys. So like I've already shown you, I can actually go in here to Q mesh a single poly and I can stitch this entire thing up. So if I want to bridge two polys, I can use Q mesh as well. I can just drag these together and they'll snap to the middle. I can hold down shift to smooth and you see these are welded together. So Q mesh already kind of has that functionality built in. Uh, another thing you can do is I can say Q mesh flat island and I can start pulling these across or I can say Q mesh polygroup all and if I start alt painting on here this is going to be like painting a selection. So now this is going to be treated as one polygroup or in fact if I say Q mesh a single poly it'll be treated as one single poly because whenever you alt paint on something, it treats it as the same thing. In fact, if I hold down Alt and paint over this, it'll remove that painted selection. So if I go through here and say Q mesh a poly, it'll actually pull all of these polygons out. Even though I said only one poly, it treats painted polygons as one single poly. And again, I can hold down Shift if I want to pull along that surface normal, or I can Q mesh out, or as I'm pulling, I can hold down Control and pull this out. Now you're going to see this polygroup here is the same purple as the other one. So if I want, I'm going to tap Alt to make these new polygroups available to me. So I'm going to pull this out and then I'll let go of Control and then just Q mesh, let's say Q mesh polygroup all. And there we go, we've got a separate piece over here. So if I go back here and I say I want to bridge two polys, I can say this poly here. And as I hover over here, it's going to say bridge two polys, click the first poly and then click the second poly and it'll go ahead and bridge those two. Now if I hover over a face and I say I'm going to skip crease, I'm going to go straight here to delete a single poly. I can delete this poly and then I can delete any one of these. I can delete this poly. Now this poly, if I undo that, if I say Q mesh a single poly, I can just literally just pull this over and it'll snap to that other side here. So this is a very way, easy way to kind of bridge two polygons or even close holes in between here or get rid of them uh, with Q mesh here. However, I can also say delete a single poly, let's say this one and this one. I can now hover over an edge and say bridge two holes. And now I can bridge that hole and I can hover, I just click that edge here and it says click the first hole and now click the second hole and drag. And now you can see I can change the curvature here and I can change the resolution if I want. So that's another way you can use a bridge function that doesn't rely on just faces. Let's go ahead and undo all that. We'll hover over a face. We've already talked about do nothing. Equalize. We'll go ahead and make all the sides equal on that single poly. Extrude we've already talked about. It's a lot like Q mesh here. We can alt paint this and extrude. It just won't have that snapping functionality. It's just a simple extrude. Flip faces, I don't use that often. You can go down here and you can actually say display properties flip and that'll flip all of your normals in here. We'll get to that later when we do close holes. You can do inflate a single poly and because these are already marked it's going to treat both of these as a single poly. However if you say all polygons as you pull it'll just inflate all of those polygons along the surface normal. Insert nano mesh we'll talk about when we talk about nano mesh. Insert point will literally just add a point to the middle and this will come in handy if you hover over a point here and you say split. You can now split a point on here and as you pull this out and then you go to the other side and you just tap, it'll make it the exact same size. You can alt paint every one of these faces here, change this to Q mesh, polygroup all and you can just push this back in and it'll snap to that other side. So that's another easy way to maybe do an inset. In fact, speaking of inset, if we go here to inset, you're going to see we have inset polygroup all. And we have a new thing in equidist called equidistant in Zebra 2021. And that'll just make sure that this is all equidistant. It also does the entire region here by default. So you're going to see it's set to inset region. So we're insetting polygroup all. Let's go ahead and do another polygroup, group by normals, and again if I want to have the polygroups the same on both sides, geometry, modify topology, 
mirror and weld. So over here we can say inset polygroup all center and border region equidistant. So now as I drag through here it's going to keep this edge nice and equidistant. If I change it from region to each poly, each polygroup or each polygon on this polygroup will be inset individually but still equidistant. So if we want to go inset a single poly each poly, we can go through here, we can pull this into inset, and then again just tap over here to get the exact same inset, and then one more time, switch this to hover over face, Q mesh, a single poly, pull that through, and there you go. Now if we go over here, and we hover over a face, and we say inset, polygroup all, region, equidistant, and we pull this in, you're going to see it's going to try to do a good job, and for the most part it will, but it may have a kind of a tough time depending on your geometry. In fact, let's switch from this object over here to a cube 3D. Zoom out a little bit. Let's go up here to make poly mesh 3D. And we can hold down Alt. I'm going to paint over all of these here. And again, we'll go in here to inset polygroup. And you're going to see, in order to keep this equal, and this equal, it starts adding these little lines here and trying to make it so that it can be as equidistant as possible. However, if you take this custom equidistant snap and you crank that up, that'll try to snap that as opposed to like putting a line here and adding geometry, it'll attempt to snap that. And again, it gets a little wobbly through here, but again, it's trying to maintain equidistance on topology that's a little bit tough to do. If you want, you can go inset polygroup all, and instead of doing equidistant, you can just choose standard or legacy. So we'll choose default equidistant snap, we'll choose this legacy now. And now as I pull this in, it may not be perfectly equidistant, but it does a pretty good job of keeping the line straight. So legacy might be a better option. You're going to see over here in the corners, it kind of starts to dip down a little bit, depending on how far you pull this in. So again, it's not equidistant, but this might be another option for you. If you go to standard, it'll try and do equidistant as well, but it'll also start having problems keeping these things on the same plane here. Now some of these, let's go back to our working mesh here. Some of these are pretty self-explanatory. If you hover over a face, we can say mask polygroup all, and it'll go ahead and mask that for us. We can control tap to invert that, hit W, and then we can just move these mask points in that direction. Or remember, you can hold down control, and you can pull out uh, extrusions, or hold down, hold down control, start dragging, and then let go of control. Another one, too, that I like, instead of mask, I'll just go over here to transpose polygroup all. So now what I can do is I can just tap on here, and it'll automatically go to transpose and put that gizmo right where I tap. So I can kind of skip a step. And then again, I can hold down control and just drag this out. Now this is another option where if I want to go through and do another transpose polygroup, like say back here, instead of hitting Q to go back into draw mode, control dragging, hovering over face and saying transpose polygroup all again, and then running this operation. What I can do is I can just tap off to go out of that mode, tap on this polygroup, and then start moving this. So very quickly I can just tap off, tap this polygroup, and move. Again, we talked about this before, but it's under preferences, gizmo, tap to exit gizmo. So if you're going to use hovering over a face and transpose, this is a good option. Just tap off, tap, move, tap off, tap, and move. Of course, same thing, you can say like move, polygroup all, and you can just tap a polygroup and it'll just slide along here. Of course, you know, you already know you can go in here to Q mesh and hold down shift, Q mesh polygroup all, and hold down shift. So instead of using a move, you can just use Q mesh with shift. Now you can also polygroup a flat island, for instance, and go through here and you can, anything that's flat along here, you can just tap and then tap alt to change it to a new polygroup here. But generally speaking, what I'll do if I want polygroups, I'll just go right back down here to the polygroups options and say group by normals, and then geometry modified topology mirrored well to make sure it's the same on both sides. Another thing too that you can do, 
Uh, speaking of polygroups, so you see we have a green polygroup here, an orange one, and a blue one. If I hold down Alt and start painting on the green, let go of Alt, you're going to see it's just going to cycle through a bunch of different polygroups. So I can make this purple, and then I can just continue painting and just paint everything purple. If I undo that, hold down Alt, start painting on this green, and then let go of Alt and tap Shift, it's going to inherit that polygroup that I'm painting on. So if I continue painting, it's going to paint with that green polygroup. So if I go over here and start painting and let go of Alt, it's still going to be painting with that green polygroup. So that's an easy way to kind of take a polygroup like this blue, hold down Alt, tap Shift to inherit that polygroup, and then continue painting without letting up on my tablet, like so. Of course, if you're using polygroup, you can say polygroup, polygroup all, you can say checker. So if you if you tap here, it'll go through and try to, I mean, that one looks a little bit weird, but if you go through here and choose something like a plain 3D, make poly mesh 3D, hover over a face and say polygroup, polygroup all, checker. Now it'll be every other polygroup will get its own polygroup here. So some really cool stuff in here like topological. And six sides isn't going to do too much on this one, but if we go back to a cube 3D, make poly mesh, and then choose that one, it'll go through here and basically do a six-sided projection to give you a polygroup on each side. And of course we go down here to checker now. I can put a checker on each one of those polygroups, or I can say all polygons checker, and now every single polygon gets a checker pattern here. So if I now go through here and say inset polygroup all each poly, now I can quickly go through here and inset all of these, and then I can say delete polygroup all and delete those if I want. 